What's up everyone? I'm excited to be able to finally share a new kind of video with you that I've been working on for quite some time. This past week we spent some time in Calumet, which is in the heart of Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula, also known as Copper Country. I spent a whole morning walking a few miles around town shooting a bunch of POV style videos and a ton of photos. So we compiled all of those together and paired it with a short history of the area and also some information about a few of our favorite buildings. Without further ado, let's get started. For thousands of years before the white man arrived in what would become the United States, indigenous people called the Keweenaw home. They used copper deposits to make beads, knives, spears, and other items. When the French arrived in the 1600s, the Ojibwe inhabited the Keweenaw Peninsula, although other tribes once roamed here. After the prosperity of the fur industry began to die down, many native lands were taken by the United States government in a series of treaties. A treaty in 1842 gave the U.S. government large portions of the Upper Peninsula west of the Chocolate River, including the Keweenaw, in addition to parts of northern Wisconsin. The last remnants of native land in this part of Michigan is the Keweenaw Bay Indian community, within which parts of the communities of Baraga and Lance reside. Soon after the land was ceded, commercial copper mining began in the region. Mining communities popped up all over the copper range that spread from the top of the Keweenaw past Ontonagon. One of those communities was Calumet, which was settled as Red Jacket in the 1860s. The town was named after a Seneca chief and was incorporated in 1875. By 1880, the population was over 2,000 people, primarily due to the booming mining industry in the area. The largest and most profitable employer was the Calumet and Hecla Mining Company, which had such a significant presence in the town that it was nicknamed Calumet. The population would peak at the 1900 census with just over 5,000 people living in the town, with over 25,000 living in the township that surrounded it. Many lived in mine-owned housing, and several groups of homes were built in identical batches. As the mining industry began to die down, so did the population of Red Jacket, which legally changed its name to Calumet in 1929. The population would fall below 2,000 people by 1930 and below 1,000 by 1990. The 2020 census lists Calumet's population at 621 people. The opulence of the Calumet Theater, which opened in 1900, was a testament to the prosperity the village of Red Jacket saw at the turn of the century. As the population of Calumet declined, so did the theater's patronage. 
In 1983, a nonprofit called the Calumet Theatre Company began operating the building, and today, some 60 shows take place there each year. The cornerstone for St. Joseph's Catholic Church was laid in 1903, but the building wouldn't be completed until 1908. The parish served Calumet's Slovenian population until 1966, when it combined with three other local churches and was renamed St. Paul the Apostle Church. The Italian Hall was built in 1908. In 1913, there was a strike in which miners from every mine in Copper Country refused to work until companies agreed to higher pay and shorter work days. On Christmas Eve, the Western Federation of Miners Ladies Auxiliary hosted a holiday party for the striking miners. At some point, an unidentified person yelled fire, causing a panic. In a rush for the door, 73 people were trampled and died, most of whom were women and children. Eyewitnesses said that the man who yelled fire was a scab, or an anti-union thug, but the investigation never determined who the man was. The Italian Hall was demolished in October of 1984, to the dismay of local and national historians alike. The Mineral Range Depot, or Calumet Depot, was built in 1908 to replace an older structure on the same site. Although the mining boom was already over by the time it was completed, the depot saw generations of residents arrive and depart from the Keweenaw, searching for a better future. In 2017, Calumet Township acquired the tattered property with hopes of renovating it, although not much work has been done since then. The Calumet Coliseum is the oldest operating continuous-use ice rink in North America and has been operational since 1914. After a stint as Calumet's armory, the Coliseum was converted back into a public arena and hosted a match between the Detroit Red Wings and the St. Louis Blues in 2019. In the evening hours of May 21, 2021, a fire broke out on the 100 block of 5th Street in downtown Calumet. The blaze would quickly consume three-fourths of the block, decimating three historic buildings. In total, 12 different fire departments fought the fire into the early hours of May 22. All three buildings were a total loss, and the block will never be the same.
I hope that you all enjoyed that video. As I said in the beginning, I've been working on the concept for quite a while now. Calumet is by far one of my favorite towns in Michigan, and every time we visit I feel like I learn a ton of new stuff. If you did enjoy the video or you have any critiques of the new style, drop a comment below, and I'd also appreciate it if you threw a like on the video and subscribed so you can see more content like this adventuring around Michigan. For more information on Calumet, the Keweenaw, and Michigan in general, and how to plan your trip around our great state, check out miroadtrip.com. We've created an interactive map that's great for road trips because it's got information about different locations all around the state, complete with photos and detailed information about what to expect once you get there. Until next time, enjoy the trip.